think I'm gonna be a while. What? Wait, this meeting is not over. You are coming back, right? Maybe, maybe not. What? You know, did it again. I, I don't know who you are. You're that pest, that reverend that didn't have enough time for my sister. Maybe I just don't have what it takes to pastor anymore. Ms. Malone is a child of God in need, and it's my duty as a deacon to care for her first. Derek, we have got a problem, and this thing cannot be ignored. Come on, baby. When is the right time? We need to pick a time and a date, and we need to let the whole church know. Look, I never said we were going to get married, okay? I never used those words. can only see you in those oh mighty woman of the most high Ooh, ain't they beauts honey and i guarantee you i'm gonna wear them in the pulpit one day just for deacon hall <laughs> you're gonna send that man to an early grave i know but ain't it fun <laughs> oh, Mercy. oh my goodness so tell me what you're studying boy talk about going from the silly to the sublime my favorite the presence of god I was looking at Exodus 34 where Moses' face shone because he'd been in the presence of God. And I got all excited because I looked up the word shone and it means a shining forth of light. Makes me think of Jesus, yeah. the light of the world. Yeah. But you're in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament, the fact that it's in the Old Testament makes me think of the eternal nature of God. In other words, he was, he always was, he is, and he always will be. Preach it, sister. Woo! Ooh, yeah. Woo. Yes. Get me excited. But we do see the same definition in the New Testament in the account of Peter's shadow. That word shadow means an effulgence. It means a shining forth of light. And the only light that would have carried the kind of power necessary to heal all those people was Christ. Well, all together now. <laughs> this, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> You and I better keep our day job, that's all I know. Not our area of anointing. But you know, as excited as I got about that, my heart kind of hurt when I realized that that same light, Maddie, ought to be shining out of all of us a lot. Well, why don't we see it? Well, I think we do, sporadically. I've seen it a few times, but mostly it's when the power of God is all over that person. Well, what makes that happen? Well, I guess I can think of three things. One, and always, worship. You know, when you see folks that are in that third heaven worship, the light whew, shines right off of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Intercessory prayer. Folks, when they're in deep, deep intercessory prayer and you look at their face, you can just see light, light. And then from my own experience, I guess, probably obedience. And I say that because I remember that when my dad died, girl, you know what it's like, a girl loses her daddy. I felt like my heart was being ripped right out of my chest. Mm, I'm sure. That's true. Oh, yeah. But before he died, even before I knew he was going to die, the Lord spoke to me and said that I was going to be preaching his funeral message because there were going to be people there who that would be the last time they heard the gospel message before it was their time to pass on. Oh, my word. No pressure there. <clears throat> how did <throat> you handle it? Only way I knew how to handle it. I just locked myself in. I would not allow myself to be sidetracked by anything. Now that didn't mean I didn't have to talk to people, but in here, in my mind, mm -mm, 
I was locked in, focusing on one thing and one thing only. That was the message the Lord was giving me for those people. You're kidding. Mm -mm. Even the morning of the service, I wouldn't let anything sidetrack me. Not even when they rolled my daddy's casket in in front of me. Not even when my mama came in. And, you know, she lived another 26 years. But that morning, she was old and broken, bent over. You know, there was confusion all over her face, tears coming down. But I couldn't let anything, Maddie, sidetrack me. So there was this massive cross hanging from the ceiling over the altar. And I just put my eyes on it. And I would not take my eyes off of that until I reached the platform. Mm. It makes me want to cry. Mm. It's hard. Mm. Yeah. So where did this light come in? Ah, the next day, a woman came to mom's house, just wanted to check on her, see how she was. And mom said, well, what'd you think of her message? And the woman came back and said, well, I only got bits and pieces of it because I kept looking at this light that was all around her. Really? Yes. Wow. Maddie, if there is anybody that knows me, it's you. And you know I am one imperfect vessel. Alligator <laughs> slips and all, you know. <laughs> but you also know that I love God with my whole heart. And I will do whatever he instructs me to do. But that day... It took every ounce of the Spirit of Christ that was in me to rise up to give me the ability to accomplish the assignment I'd been given. And I humbly believe that He manifested Himself in all His mercy, His grace, His power, and yes, even I think His delight in that light. That's pretty humbling. You think? Well, anyway, I'm going to meet with the leaders of the church this afternoon, and that's going to be my focus, that we, especially as leaders, have to become seekers of His presence, because that's the only way that that same light is going to shine out of all of us, and the accompanying power will flow from us. Well, I'm going to be praying. Ooh, and I'm going to depend on it. And Lynn, leave the slippers home. Not don't go dissing my <laughs> slippers. You don't know how much effort I put into finding those things. Those fine slippers, girl. You are something else. <laughs>honey, I understand that. Sure. All right. How about uh, nine o'clock tomorrow morning? You betcha. All right. Lord bless. See you then. Bye. Well, good afternoon, saints. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Where are the halls? Oh, they had to run their car into the shop. So they're going to be a bit late and the rain doesn't help any either. Hey, well, Lord bless it that there be nothing terribly wrong. In Jesus' name. Mm. Deacon Ragland, you want to start us off in prayer? Certainly. Bow heads. Father, our prayer is simple. Please be in our midst and let everything be done according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, this, I wanted to really talk to us seriously about something that I think is such a desperate need for the church, yes, but mm -hmm. especially for us as leaders, mm -hmm. and that is we must become seekers of God's presence. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that so important? Because in His presence, there's power, and that power is needed to do everything that He's called us to do. Yes. Yes, Deke, I tell you, you get to the point, you just read my mail all the time, and you are so right. With His presence comes His power. Lord, I'm getting those goosebumps again. Well, hold the bumps, Mama, because I've got to warn you. Once we commit to taking this journey, it's going to seem like half the hordes from you know where are coming after us. You know, she's right. You know, without the power, you know, we're no threat to the enemy. 
But the moment the enemy senses power, that's when the battle begins. Exactly. But with the Holy Ghost comes the power and the wisdom that we need to do everything that he's called us to do. And to win. Amen. Amen. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking we start now and we start simply. <laughs> you know that's going to take a miracle, right? I'm talking about the kind of miracle, parting the Red Sea type of miracle. But I believe in miracles. Me too. You know, come on, I, I just got to be up front with you. I have been in so many services where I walked into the sanctuary and honest to Pete, I thought I just walked into a Friday night social. Only thing missing was the Coke and the tater chips. <laughs> and then I have walked into a few mm, where everybody sat in silent prayer and meditation, sincerely preparing themselves before the Lord. And in the midst of that atmosphere, there was such a sense of reverence for God. You know that arrow hit home? You know why? Why? Because my congregation usually takes that time to catch up on the latest gossip. And then there's that. But I think that's a good place to start. We start out with silent prayer and meditation and then we move right on into worship. Just look at my arm. This is definitely a God thing. It's a God thing. Sounds like the halls. I guess they got the car fixed. Praise God, it could have been that serious then. Please.